Welcome back to the channel, everybody, and Toronto Pearson International Airport. Today, I'm at Pearson to grab a flight from Toronto to Dubai. I'll be flying on Air Canada, and I actually took this flight approximately one year ago and was one of my very first trip reports on the channel. You can watch that at the link above. This time, however, I'm going to be flying on Air Canada's business class, also known as Signature Class. Do you love aviation, travel, and photography? If so, you're at the right place. Please subscribe to the channel for trip reports and travel vlogs of various destinations. Air Canada's Dubai flight operates in the evening out of Toronto Pearson. It was a typical gloomy late winter day in Toronto as I arrived at the airport. However, greeting passengers at the entrance are three Inukshuks. These are indigenous symbols of a safe journey. Once inside the terminal, I made my way to the very first set of check-in counters which represent Air Canada's business class check-in. As is typical in North America, most eastbound flights take off late in the afternoon or evening, so the check-in area was fairly busy. It is also very spacious with comfortable seating for passengers as well as a gorgeous model of a Boeing 787-9 Dreamliner in Air Canada's livery. After check-in, it was through security, which was fairly seamless, and then the long walk down to the very end of Pier F and the E-Gates. At the end of the long walk, you take the escalator down to the departure gate level. The very first thing you see is a massive sculpture by Richard Serra titled Tilted Spheres. One unique feature that Air Canada does have for their business class passengers is the opportunity to have a fine dining five-star experience prior to boarding their flight in their signature suite. Access to the signature suite is through an elevator located right by gate E77. The elevator is also used to access the Plaza Premium Lounge, so it can get quite busy at times. With it being the March break spring holiday season, the lounge was quite busy and I had to wait for about 10 minutes or so before I got a seat. I'll cover the entire dining experience in a separate video, but let's just say it was worth it. The international departure area at Toronto Pearson does offer the usual shopping such as luxury brands as well as duty free, along with several food and beverage outlets. This is, however, relatively small compared to airports where there is a lot of connection traffic, such as London Heathrow, Dubai, Doha, Bangkok, etc. But if you're in the need of a last minute gift, I'm sure you can find it in the shopping that is available. Ever since Air Canada and Emirates announced their partnership in 2023, the flights have been booked solid. Both Air Canada and Emirates operate daily flights from Toronto to Dubai. Emirates has also added a daily flight from Dubai to Montreal, and Air Canada has started a Vancouver to Dubai flight on the 787-9 Dreamliner. My flight today was very full, and the gate agents were asking people to come forward and volunteer to have their hand baggage checked in to their final destination. My home for the next 13 plus hours on this flight to Dubai is seat 9A. Seat 9A is a bulkhead seat located in the smaller business class cabin located after the second door on the Boeing 777-300ER. The bulkhead seat does provide some extra leg room, but my primary reason for booking this is the fabulous view of the GE90 engine. Boarding completed on time, and the pilot came on and made an announcement that we'd be heading over to the de-icing facility prior to takeoff, as there had been some reports of icing as the planes were departing from Toronto. We pushed back shortly after, 
and then the pilots fired up those massive GE90 engines. Let's enjoy the sound of them starting up. We taxied over to the de-icing facility located between the two parallel north-south runways at Pearson 33 left and 33 right. In the height of winter, typically the entire plane gets de-iced, but today, since it was quite warm and there was only some small reports of icing on the wings, only the wings were done on our 777. About five minutes later, de-icing was complete and we were good to proceed over to runway 5 for departure. Let's enjoy the takeoff. Thirty minutes into the flight, as we cruised high above the Ottawa and Montreal area along the St. Lawrence River, the cabin crew began preparations for the meal service. There was a choice between four main courses. You could get the braised chicken thigh, the roasted cod loin, the beef short rib, or the eggplant and zucchini lasagna, which I chose. This came with an appetizer of Mediterranean meze, a little cheese platter, and a dark chocolate fondant for dessert. The meze appetizer was fantastic, and despite the slightly sloppy appearance on the plate, the lasagna tasted good as well. The portions were a little on the small side, especially the appetizer, and I would have thought that in a premium cabin they would have served the appetizer first, followed by the main course, and then dessert. Now this may be as they expect their guests to use the signature suite restaurant before boarding the flight, as well as you know, getting through the service fairly quickly so folks can rest since it is a late evening departure out of Toronto. After dinner, I needed to get some rest, so let's check out Air Canada's Signature Class C. Air Canada's business class on their Boeing 787 and 777s is set up in a reverse herringbone layout in a 1 2 1 configuration. There's a digital control panel to the side of the seat. That allows you to call for a flight attendant, control your lighting, as well as the seat configuration and comfort features. Under control, you can adjust the foot rest, the lumbar, as well as the seat back. On the side of the screen, you will see a sit, relax, and rest. Those are one touch configuration options that if you press and hold, it will immediately move the seat into that configuration completely. Under the comfort option, you've got the same lumbar, headrest, footrest, but with a massage option. Since it was still almost 10 hours until we would reach Dubai, I figured the best thing to do was to try and get some sleep. So I put the mattress pad on the seat and then put it into lie flat mode. Sweet dreams. Several hours later, after a surprisingly comfortable nap, I pulled up the sunshade to see that we were just crossing the coastline of France and passing over Normandy Beach. As we continued over the French countryside, the city of lights came into view. Paris, France. This place is definitely on my bucket list. Can you guys make out the Eiffel Tower down there? Since I was awake, I figured I might as well freshen up. Let's take a look at the business class lav on this Boeing 777. Nothing overly special about the lav. It was equipped with the basic amenities as you would expect. However, it does have a window, which is quite nice, albeit that it was very scratched up. The wall also has a wonderful maple leaf motif, but it's surprising that the one leaf that's red in color is hidden behind this handle.
We were cruising above southern Iraq when breakfast service commenced. As you would expect, a very pleasant crew member came by, opened up my tray table, put out the tablecloth, preparing for service. There were two options available for breakfast. You could get the omelette or you could get the pancakes. I decided to go with the omelette because I wasn't really in the mood for something sweet. Accompanying the omelette was a bowl of cut fruit and another bowl of muesli. There was also a warm croissant. The muesli was delicious and the omelette itself was okay. However, the chickpea and kale accompaniment with the omelette was not very tasty at all and kind of bland to be quite honest. By the time breakfast service finished, we were almost about to begin the descent into Dubai. I watched out the window as day turned to night. Dubai is a very busy airport and early evening is especially busy. So we did a few loops over the Persian Gulf before our flight was given clearance to land. We flew over the Emirate of Sharjah before making a sweeping turn over the desert to land on runway 30 left. Enjoy the landing. After deplaning, we made the very, very long walk from the sea gates all the way to immigration. Immigration actually was pretty empty, which was surprising to me. So I was through fairly quickly. My bags came through shortly thereafter that at one of the carousels. And then I made my way out into the arrivals hall and to the Atelis Salat counter to get myself a sim. Thanks for watching. And if you've stuck around until the end, please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Thank you so much. See you on the next one.